Hello, my name is Matthew Gaston, and today we'll be looking at plants in the Edwards Plateau. So come along. Matthew Gaston's glorious international botanical extravaganza. The Edwards Plateau is one of 10 ecological regions here in Texas, and it's also called the Hill Country. <sighs> the Hill Country is central Texas, and that's where I was raised, actually, so I'm really excited about the plants here because I grew up with them. They feel like my friends and family. So the Hill Country has a lot of one particular rock, and that's the limestone. A uh, limestone is a, a very alkaline rock made of calcium carbonate that was created when we were underwater like 80 million years ago. It's, uh, it's formed by tiny little animals that have died and fossilized and uh, other carbon cycling uh, properties within the oceans. But it creates a really alkaline soil. And so we can actually learn something about the, uh, the properties of this mineral here by doing a little experiment. The chemistry void. Uh, so all of this limestone is uh, really alkaline and it will have a reaction with the acid here you'll see it starts fizzing. Now, all of this bubbling is carbon dioxide being released from the calcium carbonate. That's all gas. And this is a, uh, it smells very potent, like vinegar. All of this here is really alkaline. And so the plants that live in this area have to be specially adapted to this type of uh, rock and soil. Now, if we actually look at the soil, there's not that much of it. There's poison ivy here, but if we were to go down beneath, we would see that there's actually a quite limited organic material. And it goes back to that really alkaline, rocky material. Uh, so the plants that are in this area have to be specially adapted to survive with uh, limited organic matter. A lot of them like to live in rocks themselves, and they thrive just in rocky soils. So the hill country here has two real main trees that are really prominent. We have oaks of the genus Quercus, and then my favorite, the junipers. Uh, this is ash juniper, Juniperus ashii. And these are found most prominently with its highest population here in the southeastern section of the hill country. So let's go take a look. Ah. So here in our, our juniper forest, we have the ash juniper with its uh, healing bark, but then you'll see our baby oaks that are growing up here. Now these baby oaks originate from acorns, which are one of the few food sources for mammals out here. But if you look at the junipers, this is a baby juniper. Uh, they have an interesting morphology in that the babies have really sharp pointy leaves. So if you look here, the juvenile morphology of the leaf shape of the babies is quite sharp to defend it when it's small. As it gets older, the leaves form scales. They become more flat and less sharp. Okay, great. Central Texas, the Edwards Plateau, is an interesting region because it's where the desert of the west meets the forests of the east and the subtropics of the south. And so uh, we have these forests here, but it's also pretty dry we get a combination of desert plants with the forest plants. And here, oh, is a plant I kicked. This is yucca rupicola, or the twisted leaf yucca. And this particular one has really nice, prominent twisted leaves. That's how it got its name. Some people say rupicula, doesn't matter. Um, but you'll find them under the shade of all the junipers. This duff, or leaf litter, creates a healthy kind of compost underneath, which helps keep all of the things in the understory alive and protected from the sun. So within this kind of uh, healthy soil formed by the breaking down of the juniper leaves, we'll get wildflowers and grasses. And this one is called the mountain pink because it's pink. Very good. Uh, uh, you will find lots of wildflowers in Texas, particularly in the spring, but throughout the year there's always something blooming. Behind me here is another understory plant. This one is caffeinated. 
There's only two plants in North America that are caffeinated, and this is one of them in the dry, scrubby hill country called Yopan Holly. You can take the leaves, dry them out, and make a tea. Quite uh, pleasant. It's also called black drink. That was the, the translation from the indigenous name. It's also called Ilex vomitoria. This. This is the, the Texas persimmon. A lot of folks are like, you know, how, how, where are the fruits? There's lots of fruits here. Also the persimmons. Uh, this is a native one to Texas. It is uh, deep black uh, when it's ripe. When you split it open, you'll see that it has a lot of large seeds, but it's very sweet. And, and so you can see what it looks like when you open it up. And you can eat them. You can make jam out of them. You just spit out the teeth. If you didn't brush your teeth in the morning, you will see them in your mouth. If they're not squishy, they're not ripe. It's important to leave some for the birds. So junipers can either be male or female. And you should come look at this one and tell me what you think. Is it a boy or a girl? So these are the fleshy cones called a galbulus. And this is only found on the female ones. Now they're not mature yet, but there's a seed inside. And if you look, you'll see the seed and it smells like a Christmas tree. Uh, the males have all the pollen, which are equivalent to testicles. Okay, let's go this way. In the hill country here, we have our native prickly pear. Do I have it on me? It's everywhere. Oh, well. We have our native prickly pear. So this is of the genus Opuntia, and there's actually four types of cacti. There's the big tree cacti that are big tropical trees. Then you have the column and barrel cacti. Then you have little matte cactus. And then the fourth type are the segmented cactus, like this one. The segmented cactus have big spines and small spines. So these small spines here are called glockids, and those are the ones that if they touch you, they will stick to your finger and you'll have to get tweezers to pull them out. You'll notice that there are ants all over this one. Uh, the Texas Hill Country doesn't have any natural lakes. They're all dammed, uh, but we do have a lot of rivers and streams. And there are some plants that are riparian that you know a river is nearby if you see them, like the sycamore. Oh, so. Uh, this is a Mexican sycamore, has a nice silvery underside with this kind of pubescent leaf, and you see it all coming off. But if you see one of these, you're probably near a stream. So we're gonna go follow the, the water here. Okay, there's the water. We did it. The kids segment of the show. What animal do you think uses this bark? The, the golden cheeked warbler. warbler. That's right, the golden cheeked warbler, the endangered bird of central Texas. This bark could be great for your nest. I'll leave it here with all the rest. Oats. I love oats. Especially this native Texan species. This is the inland sea oats, which is a plant native to central Texas that lives in the shade. And these are the fruits. They look like oats, like oatmeal. Oatmeal is part of a healthy breakfast. breakfast.
And you can see each of these individual sections is where a seed would be filled with. Filled with. So if we pull it back, there would be one seed in one of these. So it would have one seed in it, and then it would grow. Okay, thank you. Uh, the, the soil in central Texas here is very clay loam, and it's really prominent along the waterways. If you know it's a clay, you can do a little hand test. You can form it into a ball, and you know that the, the main constituent of the soil is clay. Makes for good face paint. Soil is full of microorganisms that inhabit that little landscape. Let me go. This is a field that once had tons of active wildflowers, but as you hit the summer, they all go to seed. These are horse mint, a member of the mint family, Lamiaceae. These are the fruits, and it's a dry fruit. So if you want to come and look at this, as I tilt it out, you'll see the seeds come out. Look, see the seeds? So then these will land in the soil, and then come next April, the horse mint will grow, and it will fill the field again. Now you know. Horsemen. In central Texas, the majority of our oaks of the genus Quercus are a type of oak called a white oak. They tend to grow a little slower, and they tend to have leaves that are entire, and the edges are smooth. So this is a live oak, and the leaf is leathery. The most of our oaks are like this, but we, they, and they leave their leaves throughout the whole year. Uh, they don't really lose them. But then on the other side here, we have a red oak. Red oaks are the other group of oak. They tend to grow a little bit quicker and they're deciduous, so they lose their leaves and they have these prominent sinuses. So people from Canada will say, oh, oak, and they'll think of this leaf. People in Texas will say oak and they'll think of the other leaf. So they're both oaks. What is that? A gall. This is a, a tissue that might have an insect inside. An insect will inject its egg into the tissue of a plant and we'll see what's inside and the little egg will be in there hmm. okay i don't know what it is skip so we just saw those galls looking things on the leaves these are very prominently uh, galls of this oak there's a little wasp that makes these they look like fruit it might look like the acorn but this is actually created by a wasp the wasp injects its egg and a cocktail of hormones and chemicals into the plant tissue and it creates somewhat like a cancer a blob of tissue and then you can see a hole that is where the little insect uh, escapes i have one that i split open here where is it bop, 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 bop. i got it if you look inside there's the egg of the little wasp it hatched and it ate its way out and then uh, you have these things remaining on the trees they look like these. Looks like a home for a fairy. Would you live in there? We're gonna put it back. Always return everything where it came from. You ready? <sighs> Underneath the rocks, you might find centipedes. You ever done shot put, Mark? <sighs> you put it here and then you twist and throw it. We're not gonna do that. We're good people. If this place is so dry and hot, you might think you won't find any lichens or moss. But if you look closely on the ground, you'll see that it's living all around. It smells wet. The Edwards Plateau is defined by having discharges of springs throughout. There's not a lot of water in a lot of places, 
but there's springs constantly that pour out fresh water from the underground aquifers. So the oaks are one of the most important species in the Edwards Plateau. They provide food for lots of animals in the form of acorns. They're also habitat uh, for animals with shelter, but there's other things that live on top of it. Uh, here we have some lichens, which are a combination of like a fungus and an algae and a cyanobacteria. But then if you look up here, this looks like a bird's nest, but it's not a bird's nest. It's a type of air plant. This is the native Texan air plant, Helanzia recurvata. These are little babies. Recurvata means the stem curves, so it makes a ball. Now, these have silvery leaves with little hairs to collect moisture and different things that fall on it. But this is our native Texan air plant. And these are the fruits. And these are the spent fruits. They're brown, very pretty. If you look at this, and you see it. This is a single stem, and this is where the seeds would come out. Seeds would land in the furrows of the bark. If you look on this oak, you'll see that it has deep ridges uh, that allow for things to land into it. And so it makes a little root. It's not a parasite to the plant at all, dead to the oak. It just has its roots as holdfasts to hold on and uh, doesn't take anything. And it's not bad for the tree. If anything, it's potentially beneficial because it's creating more habitat. Some people have companies where they try and get rid of these and spray and kill them. They're just trying to make money. Okay. And so, in this particular scene, this is a pretty common sight in the Texas Hill Country. You have exposed bedrock, that limestone. You might have some open prairie here with wildflowers and cacti and grasses. And then you have your forested area off in the distance. And occasionally you'll see cactus and yuccas and deserty things mixed with the foresty things mixed with the tropical flowers and things. So, what a wonderful place to be going up and down hills all day. <laughs> there you are. God bless America and God bless the United States of America. <laughs>